everybody. This is the Joshua and Caleb Report podcast. My name is Luke Hilton, and I'm sitting across the desk from the very authentic Joshua and Caleb. Last week, Caleb uh, said I hardly ever uses their first names, so I thought I'd just give their first names this week. <laughs> you guys can decide whether or not they're Joshua and Caleb Waller, or you can decide if you think they are the two good spies coming back from the land of Israel to give you a good report. Either way, the goal is the same. We are here to give you guys the real story, the positive story, and the true message of what is happening, not only in the land of Israel, but in the heartland of Israel, because that is our focus. That is where so much of the Bible and scriptures took place, and what we believe is a vital, crucial part of God's kingdom being restored today, and so much of the world is against it, and we're just so excited to bring you guys that message. We are broadcasting from what you could really call the heartland of Missouri, and I think we're in the Bible Belt. Are we still in the Bible Belt? Oh, yes, yeah, we're, sure. we're very close to the Bible Belt. We are in southeastern Missouri in the middle of the Mark Twain National Forest, which is actually kind of cool, on our Missouri campus, which is actually out in the middle of nowhere. But the cool thing about today's technology is that you can broadcast your message, your podcast all over the world from anywhere in the world, and it's awesome. So anyways, guys, we're super excited to be talking to you today. No, talking about that, Luke, let's, let's, let's think about this for a second. Do you realize the like explosion of information on the web? Like literally you can hit a button and be anywhere in the world within seconds, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's some of the reasonings behind some of us not necessarily uh, taking things seriously, okay? Like we hear about genocides and we're like, okay. We hear about conflicts, okay. We hear about massive wildfires, like what's going on in California exactly. right now? This yeah, is the biggest disaster that's hit California and since it's since it's statehood, right? right? And believe it or not, Josh, we were out there as little kiddos. Yeah, like, we were. Yeah, we were out there bear hunting. We got you know, the bear hunt. You're right. the sportsman. Yeah. Yeah, Josh, you're the guy that's got to tell the story of that. <laughs> right. No, we went out there. These uh, we had some friends out there that actually invited us to come. We were sharing about Israel and spoke in the church and some. And afterwards, they're like, "Hey, you guys want to go bear hunting?" So, well, because they kept killing his chickens. This bear right. kept killing his chickens. Bears, yeah, were uh, causing a lot of trouble out Wait, there. Wait a second, how old were you at this point? Who? 15. 15? Yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, just getting started. But the okay. thing is, what, 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 let's just set the, set the context. What was the background? Like, what were you in California for at the age of 15? Well, we were on a family tour. So we had this big red bus and we, we Like a school bought, bus. Yeah, exactly. We bought this. Yeah, you know too much the backstory here, Luke. We bought this big red school, well, it, it was, was yellow. red when we got it. A big yeah. yellow school bus. We peeled it down, painted it red and painted decal big letters on the side of this bus like we were we were we were wild like crazy taking it all the way we wrote big letters across this bus israel the apple of god's eye this one 15 years old so we're traveling all over america at this time that's the backstory, and we're in california of all places i can remember driving this thing and actually that's a crazy story too dad Dad threw us out there to learn everything right from the get go. Right, remember we, we just around, got we our permits. permits, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're driving this big bus, and I, you know, you get you get all of the flack when you're sitting in the front seat, right? So we were great drivers. I don't, we didn't have too many problems. Thank God. We got so good, actually. The bus had a lot of mechanical issues. We were actually able to fix the bus <laughs> while, while it was driving. going down. We would open the hood and literally have one of us guys suspended over the engine. And we would be but able like to pouring fix, oil in or something. Like, yeah, no, it was right. like there'd be a major oil leak or whatever. Uh, we would whatever actually fix was, the yeah. bus while. It kept moving. I oh, mean, yeah. it, was like, it was better than the racetrack because we were able to, you know, fix it as, I mean, it was one of those buses that has the inner like hood. Yeah, we're, not, we're not talking about like, uh, like a 2000, 2005 bus. Oh, right? no, we're talking no, about no, like no, no, 1991. We have the same birthday. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that exactly. bus was like, it was so We know how to fix this thing. Old, old, old. Oh, we're talking about Well, yeah. wait a second. We're only 27 now, so oh, it's not that old. That's right. I mean, only 27. But anyway, that's the backstory for why in the world we were in California. But let's talk about these bear hunts. I remember getting out and there was this beautiful house in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it was surrounded by these massive pine trees. And I remember just hiking down in the bush. Us guys really had no clue what we were doing other than the host just gave us this gun and said, hey, when this bear comes up, shoot this bear. It's getting into our, our trash. Chickens, and getting our trash. Their stories, though. So we like us guys <laughs> who kind of just zeal for adventure. Although, you know, Middle Tennessee boys, I mean, we do have a few bears out in the Smoky Mountains, but not really like... We right, didn't have you, that. Just like to clarify, you've probably never seen a bear before. No, no, no. We've seen right? Yellowstone. We saw a bear. Okay, go on. Okay. <laughs> From no, the car but, or, or maybe in a zoo or something. Yeah, not, but really not never where came faced... Never came face to so face with a bear. So you're 15 years in old, out in California. Somebody hands you a gun and says, "Go shoot Walk bear. out in the woods, yeah. and when a bear walks up, shoot it." And the truth is, this is probably very illegal because you probably needed a permit. But question, the whole idea was just my question: Did your mother know about this? Yes, yeah, my mother knew about this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're pretty adventurous, but let's, but listen, we're telling this whole story, I believe, and the reason why this thing oh, came up back on track is because 
the host just sent us a picture of his place. Yeah, very devastating. It looks like a war zone. Yeah. Like it's literally everything is burned. Down. It's like you imagine taking a picture that's not in, that that wasn't color corrected to be black and white, but it's black and white. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's photo. That's the reality right. of this photo. Their car is completely melted to the ground. Right. Right. It's like there's no paint on the car anymore. All right. the trees are still standing, but there's no leaves, nothing left. Everything's on them. just bare. the whole place completely destroyed. Yeah. It's so sad because it and it's so crazy to have personal story out there because like we knew what this, the vibrance and the beauty of what this place is and now to see oh, this, yeah. just the horrific f- what fire can do my right, goodness sure. and oh, just California so- I mean California is beautiful beautiful oh, yeah. place especially yeah. northern California exactly. with the redwoods and the mountains and the forests and everything. So we got yeah, lots of experiences. Devastation. Yeah, but our heart really goes out to these people because 74 people or 72 people have, have died. They've got verified. They're saying there's over a thousand people missing. So this is crazy. I mean, one of the things I was just talking to Josh about though is, is that, so we take California and many of us in the middle, kind of the Southern boys or whatever, we kind of make jokes about California. We're like, oh, them Californians are a liberal state or whatever. But I mean, I think, I think there's something that, you know, God reigns on the just and the unjust, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's, and so one of the things that's, that's easy for us to kind of be indifferent about is to kind of be like, oh, whatever. That's not my problem. The same like, and, and this kind of applies to Israel as well. It's like, eh, whatever. It's not my problem. Uh, you take, you know, places in the Middle East, so just watching this, I mean, there's been massive conflicts, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are dying. It's not that you don't think it's your problem. You definitely are concerned about it and you, you worry about it and you pray for those people that are going through this tragedy. But the reality of it is, is you kind of just say, you know what? I can't take all of the world's problems on myself. I can't carry all of these. Mm-hmm. So you become very indifferent. So I guess my point being is this guys is that there is a a major shaking in the world we have tons of information at our fingertips and really we have to just ask god for the discernment and what he's calling us to do right and so with us here in hayuval our focus is the heartland of israel our focus is rebuilding up those ancient ruins that's the reason why we're we're taking probably close to 100 guys to the to, to israel coming up in a couple months to come and prune grapes why would we do that? Because we're, our 100% focus is to restore the land of Israel. Now, mind you, we've fought several fires in Israel, by the way. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's quite a more, few situations more than a few, yeah. where they actually, where the guys set fires to our vineyards and we're working through that sort of stuff. But guys, I mean, I, I think that this is not something that I feel like we cannot be judgmental at this time. We can't right. necessarily step out and say, this is God's judgment on California. What we have to say is God is doing something to shake us and to bring all of us to a place of right. saying, Lord, your will be done. Right, your kingdom right, come. Right, right? right. What you're saying is, is like you hear, especially here in the Bible Belt. We were mentioning that, like, there's a lot of people saying that, you know, just that we want because all this negative uh, government stuff. The people could say, oh, it's God's judgment on uh, California for their leftist ideas, and you know, you always hear about how they're gonna. We, well, we just wish that that part would break off and you know, be float out to float sea, out yeah. to sea, right? Like that's that's the rhetoric you hear around here. But I, you know, I don't really agree with that thought. I think that um, that God does. He sees the whole country. He sees the heart of man, and He does. Uh, you know, and really, who are we to judge those kind of situations? And so, really, from us here at Hayuvel, we we're really, uh, a really, uh, you know, very hurting with the people of California, and of course. Boy, we desire that that people would wake up in these hard times. Is that people would realize? You know, Luke was just saying that there is some bad stuff going on there. Even the this new thing about outlawing Bibles in certain areas and like crazy yeah, I stuff. Haven't, I haven't looked into the story, but I did see a headline that said they were at least in a certain county or uh, area. I'm not sure they were actually trying to pass some kind of law placing some kind of restrictions on Bibles. And yeah. I was just actually reading a book today. And it was just talking about the amazing difference, I guess, just the Bible makes in a country. Mm -hmm. Um, And the reality is, is as believers, as Christians, we know how true that is. I mean, people need God's word in their lives, and it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, And that's, that's really what we are getting back to, not just the Bible, but like serious knowing our Bibles and really wanting to have an active participation in the restoration of God's kingdom today. Mm -hmm. And in our work, like you were mentioning, we're totally focused on the heartland of Israel, focused on Israel. But one thing we like to tell people is if you, if you know, many people have callings all over the world, you might have a calling in your business. You don't have to be a missionary somewhere. You don't have to be in ministry somewhere. You don't have to have a volunteer organization or humanitarian work somewhere, whatever God's called you in, wherever you are in the world, you have to be about the restoration of his kingdom. And we believe that Israel, specifically 
the heartland of Israel is a vital piece of that. And so wherever you are and whatever work God has called you to, make sure that the Bible and all God's promises, specifically his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are part of your work and what you're teaching and you're reading and you're studying and you're praying into just this week's Torah portion Mm -hmm. uh, coming up as well as last week's Torah portion, talking again about the blessing that comes to all nations through the promise and the covenant given to Abraham. I thought it was so cool and it's very basic, but when God spoke to, uh, to uh, Jacob and Bethel and Bethel, and it shows up again in this week's Torah portion, he's talking about, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Just for the nations to know, wherever we are in the world, whatever work we're in, for the nations to know that blessings in your life are critical that they come through the blessing that God gave to Abraham. You know, I think it's so amazing, Luke, that there's God has made a way for the blessing of Abraham to be felt right now in California. Like there's a the ability for California to say, to bless Israel, that they will be blessed, right? So even, no matter where we are in the world, like there's no matter, we're, we can, we're not uh, outside of the blessing of God. Like the people, the, we pray that in uh, California right now, that there'll be a huge, you know, revival, a turn to God that people would realize. And then out of that, what would happen is, is that the 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 state would turn and, and be a blessing to Israel instead of, a, a you know, many a times of, of a curse, yeah, I, right? I don't necessarily fool. I'm, I'm a very simplistic kind of style of a guy. Josh, and I I have to tell you that I I don't fully, totally comprehend it outside of faith, to be honest with you, to understand the Abrahamic covenant, Mm -hmm. okay? The idea that, you know, God says in the word, in you, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. You know, I will bless those who bless you. And we're we're talking about, you know, that God reiterates this through Abraham, reiterates it through Isaac, then passes it down to Jacob. That's what we've been talking about. And you hear that all the time. I I guarantee you, there's not one person that's not listening to the show right now that's not going to hear that. And somebody said it in some time or another, like, hey, if you bless Israel, you're going to be blessed. that's like the beginning. That's that's Genesis 12. That's a La Morae. That's that's how you build headquarters. I know, it's foundational, but like, okay, how do I stand up with someone who just had their house burned to the ground and had nothing left and say, listen, if you bless Bless Israel Israel right now, you're going to experience a bountiful blessing in your life. Well, I think that's the uh, American, or you could say Western idea of how to translate mm-hmm. that. Because okay. I think when you when you go to China, and and this actually happened, people were telling the Chinese, you know, back before persecution started, you know, violently in the government and all that, that they, uh, you know, you just, you know, the whatever, there's these theories of rapture and whatever. You're never going to experience bad things because bad things don't happen to God's people. That's that's Prosper, just like that's a prosperity, prosperity doctrine, doctrine, right? Very very Western, right? And so that that is is actually causing people to fall away from belief because there's massive persecution happening in many other right. parts of the world, all over the Middle East. Right. And I the mean, Bible's very clear that that war is actually in Syria. Like not, thousands of Christians have been murdered. Right, right. But let's but let's get practical here for a second. By me blessing Israel, what practical sense or another does it bless me? Other than okay, always talking about man, my finances are just going through the roof because I blessed Israel. Well, okay, there's, <laughs> there's definitely things like that that I, I I could see evidence of that. It's happened. People have invested in Israel. They've been blessed. But truthfully, I mean, there has to be something more to it. And I think the foundational mm-hmm. concept is Luke was talking about the Bible and the impact it has on a society. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everyone listening here and all of us believe the Bible is a fundamental baseline for establishing morality, establishing who people are, establishing moral, I mean, everything is possible in a society that needs to be run on. Now, I believe in talking about the covenant and the blessing of standing with the land of Israel, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got some financial or you've got some bountiful blessings and everything in your life is just going to start going mm-hmm. just heavenly, which is very prosperity minded, right? It means that you have a purpose in your life now, right? People ask me, they say, Kel, why, what does Israel do for you? the land do for you, like connection to the land. Obviously, we, we start talking about Israeli government, start talking about Tel Aviv. I mean, they're talking about some of the most secular, in some ways, governments of the world in, in some respects. Um, but as far as the land of Israel goes, I believe the land itself gives me hope. It gives me that confidence that God's word is true. His land is alive. His people are coming back. The prophets, exactly what they foretold is happening. Mm-hmm. And I believe that's the confidence we can walk in, right? So the confidence is actually one of the, and the, and the ability to dream is one of the greatest blessings that God can give you in your life. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So I think that's foundational in some ways. That's kind of how I look about it. And I but, think too, to be clear, uh, we definitely don't, I guess, promote the idea that you should only bless Israel just so you can be blessed in return. Like, that's not necessarily a bad idea. Um, and it is <laughs> like a, good a start. scriptural foundation, <laughs> right? But, you know, those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel, I think it even actually says the translation correctly, those who, who think little or small of Israel. Um, but 
literally like that's a great great reason but the like you were saying the reason to bless israel is because we know that is how the the blessing to all the families of the earth comes about and we're talking about the bible we're talking about the restoration of god's kingdom literally coming down in the land of israel in jerusalem uh, the messiah coming to rule and reign it's it's really integral and vital to our faith right. and it's a massive connection when i first went to the land of israel my bible i like to say became 3d it was like 1d uh, before uh, it was just, uh, I guess, what would you say, horizontal on the page. And then I went to Israel and it literally jumped out of the pages at me because everything was happening right in front of my eyes. Everywhere I turned, you turn one direction, you see a Bible story. You turn around, you see another Bible story. You turn to your right, you see another Bible story. It's just crazy. Everything literally comes to life. So that is like all of those things are part of the connection of the blessing of Abraham. Right. And I think it peel- uh, exactly what you're rocking there, Luke, is that I actually had a kind of a slightly different experience because I'm a very futuristic, forward thinking person. It's like, let's dream, let's go huge, let's go big. And I think what hit me as I was standing there at 14 years old, first trip to Israel, I mean, guys, it was like, I'll tell you that my life, God's actually done something very pivotal for me every seven years, okay? So like, I'm 14, my first trip to Israel, I got married when I was 21, now guys, I'm launching into my 28th year, guys, this is huge, okay? But anyways, <laughs> little you started note. podcasting. I started podcasting, it's my first <laughs> podcast, is rocking, okay? But listen, this is the deal. What happened to me at 14, standing there on the mountain, was this. I said, Lord, if you're really doing something here, if you truly are doing something, I, I was inspired by what I saw historically had happened there. I was in all of what was happening presently, there, presently, but what's more inspiring to me was what was going to happen there. And I think that's the foundation that I stand upon. That's the dream that I live for, and that's the goal that we're all heading for right now. Guys, we could go on and on. And, and I was going to say at the beginning of the show, I think it's incredible that the three of us are sitting around here doing a podcast. I don't think it's any <laughs> something any of us would have dreamed of because when we were 18 and 19 years old, we literally hit the road and traveled to every little corner of North America that you possibly could. And we had no idea what we were doing, but we were telling our experiences about Israel. And to this day, that is still our goal. We want to tell you <laughs> what God is doing in the land of Israel and the restoration of his kingdom as it, uh, as it really relates to every family in every corner of the earth. But guys, we don't have too much time. We got to keep this podcast on some kind of time schedule. So moving on, we're going to tell you a little bit about, about politics in just a second, but I want to give a little bit of a commercial. Uh, and it shouldn't even really be thought of as a commercial because we have an incredible all men's trip coming up and that is the pruning. I think Caleb, maybe you mentioned a few minutes ago, but I want to just give really more of a personal look. Like, I don't know if one of you guys could tell about like a life-changing experience you had at the pruning or some way. I know for me that everybody talks about harvest is a very exciting time. Obviously, it's a very joyous time. You have the feast, uh, the harvest culminating in the feast and things like that. The pruning, it tends to be uh, cold sometimes, a lot of rain sometimes. I know we put out a um, promo video about a month ago and uh, we got some feedback afterwards because it it showed a lot of uh, storms and a lot of rain. People said, well, is that, is that what the weather's always like? Sometimes. And a lot of times there's also sunshine and 70 degree weather, but you have ups and downs. So it's a little bit of harsher climate. It's harder work. Um, so we, it's, it's an all men's trip, but it's a very, very personal time. And it's really mm-hmm. a time where we've seen like countless guys lives changed, uh, radically changed as a, with a testimony for God, people getting their lives back on track, uh, turning their lives over to God. Um, and it's really iron sharpening iron in a way that only all men can do with right. each other. Right. Yeah. I would just add to that, Luke, that that's, uh, if, if there's a man out there that would desire spiritual growth in his life, then this is absolutely the trip. There's not a, I don't, I can't think of a man that's come to the pruning season and not just been changed for life, like a massive and, you know, a connection to God, his people, his land. Uh, it's, it is a beautiful time to really connect. And it's a time where men can be men to really dig in. Yeah. And if you're, I mean, if you're a single guy, you're looking for the next step in your life. This is an awesome time. It's not just about a trip to Israel. It's actually also about finding purpose and direction from your life. If you're a married guy, if you're a retired guy, uh, this is a time to get away, to refresh, to restart, to get close with God. So anyways, I'll leave it at that, guys. But I would encourage you, go to our website, check out all the different trip options. It starts in, I think, the second week of January and uh, goes for about two months. And there's all kinds of options in there. But please, we encourage you, uh, think about coming to the pruning. We guarantee you it'll be 
an amazing, uplifting, and life-changing experience. So, guys, in the couple minutes that we have left, who wants to tackle a little bit of Israeli politics? <laughs> you mean, like, kind of how the Knesset works? Yeah, I mean, and as a quick update, we mentioned last time, there's a little bit of uh, some different stories rolling around in Israel. Obviously, the defense minister, Avigdor Lieberman, resigned, uh, which basically means his party is pulling out of the Knesset, which means the coalition is dropping five seats, um, which means they only have one Actually, they have zero seats to spare. Literally, they lose one seat, the government falls apart, they have to go to elections, which is crazy in our American Western mindset, but that's how it works in Israel. And so the news every day literally is going back and forth. Some are saying elections are going to happen. Some are saying they can hold off till next year, which they have to happen by November 2019. But a lot of people have been saying that they're going to happen as early as March or April. Um, so we really don't know what's happening. But, uh, Caleb. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Israeli government politics works a lot like, you know, obviously Canadian co- politics. Uh, basically, I, I kind of visualize it as this. Imagine that the, let's say, the Congress was pretty much the way America was ruled. Like, basically, whoever had the most seats in Congress was the ruling party, and they formed a coalition with other guys within Congress, and then basically they created a government body out of that. Much and they simpler, assigned too. It. It's only yeah, 120 it actually, seats. That's one reason I can't keep up with American politics. You have 400 and something congressmen, 100 senators. Uh, you have the House of Representatives. You have the uh, the Senate. It's just a lot to keep up with. Israel, yeah. you got 120 seats in the Knesset. That's it. That's it. And you have to have so many seats to be the prime minister. So the prime minister actually yeah, you have gets to have elected, majority. but so then have he have has at least to 61. put a coalition together. And so he has to create 61. So even after and elections, we're not just talking it's not even like firm and, yet. We're not just talking Republicans oh, and Democrats absolutely. either, yeah. right? You got like so many different, like I can't know how many 12 or 15 different parties. Maybe. Well, yeah. if you There's added parties that. that don't have seats, then it's a huge, because you could get registered as a party. It doesn't mean anything. But That's true. to actually be have somebody that has actual voice, then you talk about like uh, bite you who for one for, uh, the jewish home the yeah. jewish home party um so they have so many seats right so that's that's uh you know one one party now if they say they pulled out or they're pulling in so that number of seats that they carry would either uh be a part of say the Likud, they could join in and make Likud continue their government but if it gets below 61 seats then boom it's automatic which is something that they're threatening to do right now exactly. because uh naftali bennett who's the chairman of the jewish home party is has been demanding actually the defense minister position, which I think would be awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy, um, very strong. And but if he's saying if he doesn't get it, they might pull their party out of the coalition, which would make the uh, Netanyahu's government lose the majority, force them to go to early elections. I mean, do you realize that, that Netanyahu's been the prime minister for how many years now? I guess 10 years or something. I heard it was like 12 altogether. I think yeah, if you count his earlier term, I just well. can't imagine Israel without. You know, BB is. Prime I can't minister. either. Oh, but there's actually the former mayor of Jerusalem. I think is like I believe will be the next prime minister. I, yeah, I, for some that reason, I'm throwing, throwing it out there. I think it's good. He's the <laughs> yeah, only guy that uh, I see has is as the like as the a, a potential. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's a great guy. And if yeah. you Ehud Barak, I think you hey. served ten years as um, mayor of Jerusalem. I got my picture made with him too. So you can yeah. Google him. There's actually <laughs> a video somewhere online of him physically personally disarming a terrorist i think that had a knife in the middle yep. of a crosswalk in no, Jerusalem. like all his bodyguards are around him and everything and he, and actually, he just he's walks the one up. that takes out the terrorists yeah he just walks totally up to the guy yeah. and takes him out it's no, crazy so, so there is actually ran zero, zero the guy public uh reason i mean uh you know, political reason why we would say something like that but that's that's like caleb's going way out there on a limb i'm that just i'm just call me a prophet, one day. Call me one a prophet. Day. here we go Let's see what happens <laughs> anyways guys uh we could spend a lot more time on israeli politics but Elections may be happening soon, if not soon, then a lot of people are saying by next spring, spring 2019. But as always, we are out of time. We do want to encourage you guys, please uh, follow us on whatever platform you prefer. We're all over the internet. iTunes, the podcast app, uh, SoundCloud, uh, Facebook, YouTube, our website. I think we're even on something called the Podbean so if you want to listen to our podcast on the pod bean, go for it. We'd love to hear from you throughout the week. Uh, email at us, any of our first names at highuvel.com. We'd love to hear positive and even maybe um, constructive criticism or, or, or feedback as uh, well. Topic suggestions would be awesome. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. We have more stories to tell, more to share. But until then, guys, we encourage you, be strong, be courageous, and be the voice of Joshua and Caleb, the two good spies in your generation. Guys, we're recording from the heartland of Missouri. We'll see you next week on the Joshua and Caleb Report podcast. There's a line in the sand Where 
Will you stay?